Look at some of these popular media sites. Of course, everybody's heard about Snapchat, right? Um, it's evolved a little bit. I think it started out more of a um, kind of the same thing, like let's flash pictures and they'll go away in a couple of seconds. It's a little bit different now. I think it's a little more respectable. I don't know. I don't use it, so I don't, I don't know. Um, then there's Facebook, okay, which everybody in the world has, right? Um, I mean, does anybody in here not have Facebook? Good for you. I keep thinking I'm going to cut it off, but then I'm like, what would I do with like my kids' friends that live in a different state? I'd never see them. Um, Instagram, right? Kind of same thing. Let's, let's pretty up our pictures. We all look like supermodels on our Instagram pics. Okay. There's Twitter. Who knows what kick is? Okay. What do you want to kind of describe it? It's kind of the same thing, right? It's a free chatting app. Now, if you don't know what kick is, I looked up what some of these are, right? Because I don't, I'm not familiar with some of either. I heard of it, but didn't really know. And this is actual, this is, this is off the website, uh, Common Sense Media, and it's like 16 websites that your kids might go to after Facebook is, I think, the title of the article, actually. Yeah, 16 apps and websites kids are heading to after Facebook. So here's Kick. I'm sorry I didn't memorize these for you, but there's like, again, my memory, not, mm -mm. I mentioned I have three kids. Yeah. They ruined me. Um, okay, so here's what the, the deal with Kick. It's a free app, so you may not know if they get it because they're not going to pay for it. Okay, uh, it has no message limits, character limits, or fees if you use the basic features. So it won't show up on your phone service, right? So what parents need to know? Stranger danger is an issue. It allows communication with strangers who share their Kick usernames to find people to chat with. The app allegedly has been used in high-profile crimes, including the murder of a 13-year-old girl and child porn cases. All right. There's also Kick community blog where users can submit photos of themselves and screenshots of messages. Sometimes they display the full names of the users too, okay? Which is scary, right? It's loaded with ads and in-app purchases. It uh, specializes in promoted chats, or promoted chats, basically conversations between brands and users. It also also offers offers specifically designed apps. Um, so there's some leeway there, especially because you may not know they have it. It's just going to be gone, right? Um, everybody knows what Pinterest is, right? Yes? Can I just ask, um, for Kik, I just found out about this, that it's actually based out of Canada, mm -hmm. and so they can't track them down and do anything when there is any sort of predatory stuff going on because it's different laws. So um, an FBI expert that we you know as well has basically said there's no reason for our kids to be on Kik, that any other app can do this. When I first Googled it a long time ago, that's the first thing that popped up is there's a lot of child porn passed around on Kick. And you guys know this too. If you can Google anything, don't ever try to do any, any research where the word sex is in it. Not good, okay? Um, I had to, <laughs> I thought, I was, I was waiting for IT at work to come to me because I had to do a presentation on fetishes. Because <laughs> they want, seriously, why, why the Texas licensing, the law enforcement licensing body thought police officers need to know more about fetishes? And I'm like, you want me to get up there and talk about that? Okay. Um, but I kept waiting for IT to come to me and be like, what are you doing? They never did. Why are you looking up this stuff at work? Um, and add the ones that you know too, because you may know more about them, Stephanie, than, than some of these that I do. Okay? Pinterest. Does anybody know what Vine is? Vine is kind of funny in some cases, but I'm sure it could be used bad too. Vine is just short videos that are up there and you can't pull them off. So, but I'm sure it can be used for bad as well. Okay? There's Tumblr, which is another one. Google Plus. This WhatsApp, okay, that's another one that they talk about in here, okay? It lets users send text messages, audio messages, videos, and photos with no message limits or fees. So again, as a parent, you may not be able to track it at all, okay? What parents need to know, it's for users 16 and older. Lots of younger teens seem to be using it. The minimum age is 16, but right, like who's monitoring that, okay? It can be pushy. After you sign up, it automatically connects you to all the people in your address book who are using that same app. Okay? And it encourages you to add friends. Then there's a, there's a Musical.ly one, and that one's a little bit different. It's, where did I go on that? I know I have it somewhere. Um, it's a performance video sharing social network that mostly features teens lip syncing, but allows some original music. What parents need to know is that songs and videos contain a lot of iffy content, right? Because it features popular music and a mix of teen and adult users. Swearing and sexual content are commonplace. I mean, have you ever... You ever listen to a song that says explicit, where they bleep it out on the radio, and then you listen to it, and you're like, oh, like what? <coughs> Musically, music, musical dot, <laughs> um, 
Okay, and so get, gaining followers and fans feels important. So teens want a public profile to get exposure to approval. Many are highly motivated by getting more followers and likes for their videos. So, right, when you're getting more followers and likes, what's the chances that there's some weirdos out there following and liking you too? And then have the ability to kind of track you down. Okay. Um, there's the you now. Let me see which one it is. Let's see if I have that one. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, this is a live streaming video app. It lets kids live stream uh, and watch live broadcasts. They can comment or buy gold bars to give to other users. You're, what you're trying to do is build up your following, basically. Um, know this, right? The, the risk for parents is kids might make poor decisions to gain popularity, right? Not that kids are ever impulsive and do stupid stuff to get other people to like them like every day. Because it's live video, kids can do or say anything and can respond to requests from viewers in real time. Um, something to be, you know, worry about the kids might be prompted to do something risky because it, it gains more followers from them, okay? There's that live, that's the next one. Um, let's see if I have the one. I'll try to highlight all of them that were on here. It, yeah, it's also live streaming video. Um, so poor choices over sharing and chatting with strangers are all part of the package. It's connected to that musical one because of the parents, uh, or the parent app's popularity. It's, this is another real popular one too. But one of the concerns is because teens are often broadcasting from their bedrooms so to people they don't know, sometimes sharing phone numbers and often performing for approval, there's the potential for trouble. Again, impulsive, right? They just don't have the ability yet to think. Maybe this is going to affect me down the road. Uh, burn note is another one. And that one's really, I, I looked at that. I'd never heard of some of these before. It's a messaging app that erases messages after a set period of time. Okay? And like many other apps of this sort, it limits itself to text messages. Um, that may reduce issues such as sexting, but it, words can hurt too, we know. We know that what parents need to know, it allows kids to communicate covertly, to discourage copying and taking screenshots, um, it, may only re it only reveals part of the message at the time, but it encourages risky sharing because kids think, oh, well, this isn't going to be up here very long, so I can say whatever I want to. Right. Uh, whisper is another. That's another one. And, and these, these are actually called self-destructing secret apps. That's like the, the category they're under. All right. Whisper is a social confessional app that allows users to post whatever's on their minds paired with an image. With all the emotions running through teens, anonymous outlets give them freedom to share their feelings. So what parents need to know. Whispers are often sexual in nature. Some users use the app to try to hook up with people nearby while others post confessions of desire. Lots of eye-catching, nearly nude pics accompany these shared secrets. Because that's really what you want your kid exposed to, right? The content on this can be very dark since you're talking about emotions, all right? Um, and although it's anonymous, it may not stay that way. The app encourages users to exchange personal information in the meetup section. Because again, that's what you want is your teen setting up a meeting with a child predator, right? In their meetup section. Um, Yik Yak is another one. Um, it's a free social networking thing. Here's the problem with that. It's, it's kind of like Twitter, but it reveals your location. So it'll show you where you're, where you're at, okay? Um, and it's a mixed bag of trouble. It ha the app has it all. Cyberbullying, explicit sexual content, unintended location sharing, and exposure to uh, explicit information about drugs and alcohol. And these are, like, these are teen apps. These are the ones they're using, all right? Meet Me is another one. Um, the name says it all. Although not marketed as a dating app, it has a match feature where users can secretly admire others, and its large user base means fast-paced communication. What parents need to know, it's an open network. Users can chat with whomever's online as well as search locally. Lots of details are required for this, too. This is a problem. First and last name, age, zip code are all requested at registration. So you know kids, right? They give everything out. I mean, we'll be going through the grocery store, and my youngest is like singing my phone number. Shh. Right? When my daughter was younger, she did that too. She, we had a waiter, and he was chatting with her at the table, and she starts to give him my phone number. I'm thinking, this guy thinks I'm like using my daughter to hit on him. Um, so, so there's one too. Uh, language is a big issue on that one. Since chats are anonymous, there's a lot of bad language. And then there's Tinder, right? Everybody knows what that is? It started out as a hookup site, okay? Anybody can get online. Anybody can get online. And so you just have to be very careful. I'm sure there's more than these, but those are just some of the most popular ones that I saw. How many of you knew even about five of these on this, right? But did, all, did any of you know all of these? Had you heard of all of these? I hadn't either. And you know what? It's like anything else, right? There's probably new ones that come out every day, 
And kids know about it way quicker than we do, especially if they know they shouldn't be using it. Right? They're going to be sneaky. That's what they do. Um, so I'm, I'm, sure there's a, I'm sure there's a ton more out there. So we just have to be really aware of that. Right? OK. So here's are some of the types of bullying reported. Now, you look at the, the pie chart, the percentages, and clearly nothing matches 100. OK? But we know that if there's one type of bullying, there's often another type going on too, and maybe a third type. Like it's very likely that you would have physical and verbal bullying together, right? Um, any of those can, can go hand in hand. And also I just liked it because it's got a lot of pretty colors. <laughs> <sighs> on a very dark topic. Um, but yeah, there, there's all sorts. I mean, you look at it, name calling, shoving or hitting, threats or intimidation, spreading rumors about people, cyberbullying, involving friends and peers, homophobic comments, fighting, sexual comments, exclusion or leaving out, cell phone messages, racist comments, damaging property, stealing or weapons related. That's a lot of different types of bullying that we have to be aware of, right? It can happen to anybody. Okay. So here are some of the components of bullying. The power imbalance. Um, we know, right, if kids especially feel like they've got somebody that there's a power imbalance in a relationship, it's hard to get away from, right? It could be physical, it could be psychological. And we know kids sometimes, are, especially depending on the age and, and their personality style, they're really reluctant to stand up and fight back, okay? It's hard for them to do. I know especially, you, you look at kids at different ages. I mean, my daughter doesn't like to be acknowledged in, in public. She is at that age where she thinks the whole world is looking at her, not, not realizing that everybody else her age also thinks the whole world is looking at her, and so how can that be possible, or looking at them? Um, but she, she's just at that age, and, and at the age where it's hard, I think, to stand up for people sometimes. Repetitive actions. We know bullies don't often just pick one thing one time, right? It's over and over and over again until they break a person down. It's not just once. They don't try just one time, all right? Um, and if one thing doesn't work with a true bully, what do they do? Yeah, they'll find something else. Oh, that didn't work? Let me see if I can get you there, or there, or there, or in multiple ways, right? Uh, intentional actions, another aspect that sets bullying apart from other behaviors, and I mentioned this earlier, okay? It's not two kids getting into a fist fight on the playground because they're mad at each other in that moment, right? It's intentional actions. Uh, it's the bully intends to harm the target. I mean, they're going after that person to deliberately hurt them. I mean, it's intentional and it's malicious, okay? It's not just fighting, kids fighting, right? Bullies harass other people on purpose. Their behavior is not accidental and it's not a joke. We see kids that tease other kids all the time. Right? That's what they do. My kids jaw at each other about stuff like that. Like, he's just a baby or, or whatever. I mean, they do that. Or she's acting like a drama queen. I mean, that's not bullying. That's kids picking at each other. It's the bully who really is trying to be malicious and, and seriously cause harm for their victim. They're not just doing it because they're kids and being mean. Okay? It's absolutely premeditated. And I swear bullies can pick their victims. I mean, they know. They'll look for a target. They'll look for the people they can target, okay? And they make it very intentional. How many of you, do you have kids that are old enough to have social media? Okay, yeah. Do you ever check out who's on their social media? Yeah, which is good, right? Or, or they probably have friends that they don't even really know, the people that are acquaintances of acquaintances from other schools. And that's the scary part, too, because that's how quickly that little network can spread. Bullies come in all shapes and sizes. It's not always the popular kid that seems to have all the friends. Bullies come in all shapes and sizes. It's not like you can look and go, okay, get bully, not, no, not bully. I mean, that's not how it works, right? Anyone can become the victim of bullying. If I had more time, you ought to see the research out there on workplace bullying. People our age in a workplace setting that are bullies. What is wrong with us, right? It's crazy. I mean, there's a ton of research about that. Bullying can happen at any age. I mean, anybody can be bullied. And we know it's systemic and it's a pattern, so even if you think you're strong, if they can wear you down, it can happen. Right? There are six different types of bullying, the ones we mentioned in the beginning. Okay? Boys and girls bully differently. We'll go back to that because it is different, right? Boys tend to do what? Although with social media, I mean, we look at the case of the, the, the teenager in Alamo Heights, those were boys that were bullying a boy online. So it's changing somewhat. Uh, 
In the past, yeah, they would fight. Girls would talk bad about each other. It's changing. Okay? Those victimized by bullying don't often report it. And we're going to talk about why in a little bit. But why do you guys think that's the case? It's hard to prove. And they can, they can amp it up in a lot of cases because of what you just said. It's hard to prove, right? And I mean, let's be, who, do any of one of us want to go to somebody else and go, hey, they're talking bad about me. They're making me look stupid. They're saying I'm this. They're saying I'm that. It's embarrassing, right? Especially, again, for kids where embarrassment is like the worst thing in the world to them. They don't want to be embarrassed. That's like, that's horrible, okay? So I told you my daughter's at that age, right? And I quit doing it because I, got, I finally got it. So I drop her off in the morning, and, and like early last year, so I used to roll down the window, I love you, right? It used to be, I love you too, mom. Yeah, mm -mm, she's in third grade now. Mm -mm. No. And last year she was like, so she started, she'd walk away and she'd do this, right? She's like waving at me like that. And I'm like, oh. She goes, one day she said, mom, you know in the morning when you drop me off? Yeah. You know when you yell? You know, I love you. Yeah, I go, she just hung her head for a second. I go, does that embarrass you? She goes, yeah. And I go, then I'm going to do it every day for the rest of your life. <laughs> Except then I finally realized that at that age, that's not, it's not, fu it's funny to me. It's not funny to her. It's embarrassing. She's at that age, you know. She's at the age where she won't hold hands in front of her friends. She'll do it other places, but not in front of her friends. So, so I get it. They're just, they're so, so self-conscious at that age. Right? So again, what's fun for, so now I drop off her and my oldest son because he's in kindergarten there. Well, now he's the one going, bye, mom, love you. And she's doing this, trying to get in the door. Because my youngest son likes to roll down the window and yell. He knows it embarrasses her. What does he do to his sister? Bye, Alex, we love you. Yeah. I got to lock the windows now. It's just, yeah. Um, usually there are witnesses to bullying. But what, ha what happens when you're a kid, and they're going to talk about it in another little news story in a second. How many kids are brave enough to stand up? It's tough. Now, we need to do a better job of teaching our kids to stand up and to be tough, but it's hard. It's hard for them, right? And bullying has significant consequences. We've seen that. I mean, what could be more significant than suicide, okay? There's a story in here in a minute about a nine-year-old that killed himself. Nine. That's my daughter's age. That's sad. And that's a pretty significant consequence amongst a ton of other things that can happen to him, too, not just that.